The Kingsley Art Club presents another in our series of artist studio visits, which are in lieu of our in-person guest lecture series. This visit, as well as our other arts programs, is made possible by the dues and contributions of the members of the Kingsley to further our mission of bringing arts and arts education to the community. Hello, Kingsley members and friends. Welcome to another of the Kingsley's video visits with an artist. We're happy to see you here again. We're happy to have this particular presentation ready for you because it's sort of been a while. We had to change schedules and move things around, but we are happy to have John Yogi Fortis and William Ishmael will tell you more about John and the video. Thank you, Nancy. So uh, John Yogi Fortas is Sacramento based, but he's shown nationally in galleries, uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, among others. And he's it, one of the things to listen for in the video is his experiences as an artist in residence at a couple of uh, uh, interesting places, the Bemis Center for the Arts in Omaha, Nebraska. And he got a great deal out of that experience. And also the Joan Mitchell Center in New Orleans, which he had a very interesting, some very interesting experiences. He, he also shares during the video um, items about his personal identity, uh, uh, items about his personal life. Uh, he was born in a taxi, for example, in Japan, even though he's Filipino. So without further ado, here's the video visit with John Yoyogi Fortas. <music> Initially, you know, painting a white canvas can be pretty daunting. You want to put down the right mark, I guess. But over the years, I've had to, to work at um, liberating myself from my own thinking. And I think when I'm having fun, I'm in that, that place where I'm allowing some of these intuitive ideas or these intuitive things to mesh with maybe the ideas that I'm working through to manifest on the canvas. Hey, John. Hey, John. Hey, hey. how are you? Good, thanks, William. Good to see you. Yeah. Come on in. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having us over. Oh, anytime. All right, yeah. good. Perfect. Yeah, that should be good there, William. Okay. Let me just lean it up against uh, this one here. There you go. The dogs uh, from this series um, came from uh, a show that I had in, in Santa Fe. Um, it was the show was called "What Tribe You From?" and I met this native guy. He, he had his, all his paintings out there, and I went to go talk to him, and we were chatting. He was, "What tribe are you from?" And I said, "I'm from the Filipino tribe," and he started laughing. We were cracking up, and uh, we we just seemed to connect after I said that, you know. In this case, I, w I was um, talking about people and their association with their pets, certain types of animals, speak about a certain uh, class, right, socioeconomic class. So that referred back to what tribe you're from. <laughs> You know, I've always wanted to apply for residency. Finally, my wife said, you know, why don't you just cast a big net and see what you catch? And then I was at the climbing gym with my daughter. She was, she was at summer camp climbing. And I get this phone call and it's a number I don't recognize. I pick it up and it was um, the program director and she's the one that told me I got the residency. So uh, my wife was right, you cast a wide net and see what you catch. So I. I I caught a little big fish, I was lucky, you know. I went out there, I drove out there, and it was so cold because it was starting to come into winter. And uh, I just, I think I was the first artist there, but I happened to get the biggest space, which was 2,200 square feet. The main takeaway that I got from that residency was try not to be isolated. You have uh, contemporaries around you that um, you could you could search out and have dialogue with, and 
um, maybe have a little bit more faith in yourself and not be so critical about what you're trying to create, but actually have some fun doing it. Because right now for me, if something's not fun, then I do get bored and I'll move away from it. When I was making these paintings, they were really thick and uh, uh, kind of busy. I think that was because uh, I just wanted to be involved in every space of the painting. And then after the series, I started, um, well, it took a long time, but then I started opening up the space a little bit more. Tell us about these, all these small pieces with these, these kind of cartoon character images on them. What's your, th what's your thinking there? Well, I, it was just open studio, so I, I put all these smaller pieces up there together. And uh, I, I like how it works, even though they might not be related, <laughs> they still seem to kind of go together. The shrimp and, and these guys that have like claws and alligator claws, so I came out of my residency in, in New Orleans at the Joe Mitchell Center. Uh, I go to the, um, I had my bicycle with me, so I'd ride down to the French Market and you'd see these alligator claws, uh, the keychains and back scratchers. New Orleans, uh, it was a different, a different experience because I went there with the intention of researching the first Filipinos that lived there and also somehow tying into the community a little bit more. But I also decided I'm not gonna paint big or I'm not gonna make these paintings that I'm typically working on when I'm at, uh, at home. Uh, I found more books, so I took the covers and I started doing these drawings, ink drawings, on these book covers. And I built this ledge, like a little lip, out of molding, and I would set the books on these uh, ledges. My father, he came to San Francisco and then uh, went to New York when he was about 17. So he didn't know anybody, but he came with a little bit of money. And then later, uh, when World War II broke out, I think it was FDR that said, uh, if you're an immigrant and you want to become a citizen, then you could enlist into the army. So he did that. And from there, I think he was stationed in Korea. I was born in Japan at a military base, but in a taxi. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my, my mom and dad were on the way to the hospital. I was born in this taxi, hence my middle name is Yoyogi because that's the street I was born on. Yeah. Really? Yeah, so a lot of people think I'm Japanese, but both of my parents are Filipino. When my father came to the United States, a lot of Filipinos were called monkeys. Um, I kind of appropriated that because they were called monkeys, and I'm using this monkey as uh, a way to put myself into the work in, in a not a negative way, but, but, but a way that mm -hmm. uh, I have control of. The vest goes back to when my father came uh, into the United States. A lot of these Filipino men couldn't afford a suit, so they would, sometimes five of them would pool their money together to buy a suit and then they'd share it um, and they'd go out and they'd call it being dressed to kill. So this idea of a gang uh, vest made out of a suit jacket um, because they were dressed to kill, so uh, this whole gang idea came 
uh, into play and I made a, a patch that basically says in Tagalog, um, Swamp Brothers, and there's an alligator on one side and a uh, monkey on the other side. And the patch is made out of water buffalo hide because a water buffalo is a beast of burden and these men were just kind of working and sending their money back home. The paint can lid project has been going on a long time in different forms. Initially, it was just me painting these monkeys on the paint can lids and accumulating or amassing these lids and then I would install them in a grouping of maybe, let's say, 60, 70 and just hang them on the wall. But when I, um, when I was going to this residency in New Orleans, I wanted to somehow create a, a piece that uh, went along the route that I traveled. So I thought, well, what if I left paint can lids in different locations? And that act of putting these lids at these places would be like documenting uh, my diaspora, my immigration from one area to another area. So I started out in Sacramento. I, I put a paint can lid at Starbucks on 65th and Broadway. And then on my way to New Orleans, I think I hit up um, uh, the corner in Winslow, Arizona. I put one, Cadillac Ranch, Twin Arrows. And then in, in New Orleans, I put one at the first Whole Foods. It was the whole, first Whole Foods out of Texas. So I put one there. I put one at Jackson Square, um, Jean Lafitte's bar. And then the last one, during my research, I found out that there was a marker. I, I think it was in the town of Jean Lafitte. So I, I drove out there and I put a marker at the, um, this plaque, at the base of a plaque that kind of honored the first Filipinos that came and settled in this area and they called it Manila Village. One thing that ties all of these bodies that work together, in my opinion, is they all tend to revolve around my identity. And they might not be very obvious, but that's my relationship with the work, right? Um, I don't feel like the viewer has to understand what I'm feeling, but because I don't make the work for them, I make it for me and I don't make it to make money or to go into galleries or be in shows. I make the work for myself so I can work through whatever I need to work through and explore whatever I want to explore. And then I put it out there. I feel like if I could offer my voice as a Filipino artist to Sacramento uh, or even the Filipino community, um, I'd be happy with that. I hope you enjoyed learning about John Yogi Fortis. I think that it might be very interesting to see if we could find some of those paint can lids with the monkeys on them that he left all across the country. And interesting for us to hear how important his Filipino identity is to him and how that influences his art. So I think We've learned something today. Let me just remind you, we do have a June meeting now for the Kingsley. We are going to be at the Crocker live unless something terrible happens with COVID. And we are starting at 2.30 rather than on June 15th, which is our normal meeting day, because unfortunately we can't have lunch at the museum yet. They still don't have anybody to do that, to provide lunch. So we will be there we start a little later, that way you can go and have lunch somewhere else and come to the museum. And then we intend to have you listen to Alan Templeton, who is a major collector and donor to the Crocker, who will tell about how he chose the pieces he did and why they're in the museum. And then you'll have an opportunity to go upstairs in the historic building and see his work. So we think that this will be a wonderful way to restart our live programs at the museum with you getting to be in the auditorium and then make a tour of the artwork that he showed in his um, discussion with William Brazil. So that is on June 15th. The time will be 2.30. You can come earlier if you want. And we would be very happy to see you there. Bye.